Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, make external power that is powered by your 3D printer available on the outside. Now, a warning beforehand, you're connecting the power rails directly to your 3D printer's power supply. So uh, I recommend that you put a fuse between uh, your external power supply and the 3D printer to prevent it from blowing up. In Fusion 360, I created a design that allows for six DC barrel jacks and one through terminal input. Uh, I exported it, 3D printed it, and I started to prepare the PCB. Now the DC power jacks uh, connectors are uh, like a strip. They're very wide, they're not uh, pins. So I was needed to uh, remove the space between two uh, pins on the breakout board to allow for the connector to be able to slide in, as you can see right here. After inserting the DC jacks into the PCB, it was time to start soldering them together. The idea is that I create a giant uh, solder bus uh, going uh, from one side of the PCB uh, to the other side of the PCB. Uh, so all the DC jacks are connected equally. And there are quite some current capabilities uh, on the PCB. Now I recommend that you start off with soldering the terminal connector since that's the tallest part of the PCB. And when you uh, solder the terminal connector, you can then solder uh, the rest of the DC jacks and uh, finally solder them together. To enable more specific projects, I decided that I would also add a 5 volt DC to DC bug converter, or actually bug boost, that converts the 12 volts that the 3D printer is running on into 5 volts very efficiently. Now this is handy if you want to use an Arduino or an ESP8266 or 32 if you will, or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's being powered by the uh, 3D printer uh, and it allows you yeah, to connect those devices. I'll post a link to all the 3D models in the description so you can download them yourself and print them and make uh, the, the, the cases for uh, each component. Now I did not make the uh, 3D case for the bug boost converter myself. I downloaded it um, and I just printed it out and it uh, fits. The only thing is you uh, are going to see me glue the trim pots um, and that's not something you want to do uh, since the hot glue won't fit inside the actual cutout for the trim pot. And the second thing is that you might need to enlarge the holes in the DC to DC uh, boost converter board since there are uh, some pins on the inside of the case that the boost converter board, well, is supposed to slide over. Um, but yeah, due to tolerances and all those uh, things, uh, it didn't fit on, uh, on my print. So you might need to use a drill or I used uh, a uh, Philips uh, screw bit uh, to 
increase the diameter of the hole uh, a little. As you can see, I connected a DC jack to the inputs of the bug boost converter. This allows for, well, daisy chaining. The uh, bug boost converter is connected to the other external power supply mod module uh, with the DC jacks. Now I recommend that you get some long cables to connect the first external power supply mod to a 3D printer since those cables will go inside the 3D printer. Um, so yeah, it depends on where you want to place the DC jack row um, inside your 3D printer area. Another thing is you might want to use, uh, I think they're called U-clamps. I'll put a picture on the, on the screen right now of those clamps. Uh, since the CR-10S uh, uses them already and it allows for yeah, easy uh, connecting of the wire. And just crimp it or solder it and then the wire slides uh, onto it. As you can see, I also soldered a diode onto the PCB. I thought it was smart for reverse polarity protection, but it turned out it gave me a free 12 to 5 volt converter. And the diode drop was so large that the 12 volts didn't even go to 12 volt. It stayed at five because of the diode. So I removed the diode and when I finished soldering, and that's very important. You need to check for short circuits. Check visually, check with your multimeter on continuity mode. Because if there are any short circuits and you connect it directly to your printer's power supply, there's a chance that things will break and you have to buy a new 3D printer power supply. And the power supply for the Creality CR10S is around 40 euros. So I think it's worthwhile to just check if there are any short circuits. So in order to take your 3D printer apart, you need to remove everything from the printer. So your filament, your filament spool holder, uh, disconnect all the cables, including your mains cable. Uh, switching the power switch to off is not enough. You actually need to disconnect it. And when you do that, uh, flip over the control unit and remove all the screws at the bottom, not at the sides, only at the bottom. Because if you do remove the screws at the side, the power supply will come loose and it will fall down the, uh, yeah, the case. And there are some sensitive electronics below the power supply, if I remember correctly. So once you remove the bottom, you can see the power supply of your 3D printer. There's a yellow uh, plastic cap or actually bar that's um, over the terminals. And you need to um, use the V plus and V minus. Those are the 12 volt outputs. Uh, and here I'm uh, pushing the two wires through the opening at the back side of the printer case. So that's nice and you don't have to, uh, to draw So when you've got all your wires pushed through, it's time to unscrew one of the V plus terminals. 
lift up the uh, U-connector and squeeze your cable uh, below the U-connector and then tighten the screw again. Give it a hard, strong pull to really make sure that the wire is uh, connected and is properly, properly tightened and that it won't uh, come loose. And yeah, when you've done that, it's time to, uh, to close up your 3D printer again. I'm uh, just uh, giving some extra space to the wiring. Make sure that the wiring doesn't hit any fan or something. And when you're done, just place the cover on top of it. And yeah, just screw in all the screws. Flip the device around and your 3D printer should still boot. Now I recommend for the first boot with the new mod installed that you uh, boot it without anything connected. So if something goes wrong, then it's only your 3D printer. If there's no uh, protection inside the power supply, which I doubt, but just to be safe, only connect your, your necessary wires and don't connect anything to the external 12 volt connection. Uh, so you don't risk breaking your uh, Hardware. Please excuse the crudity of this test setup with the two uh, 9 volt battery connectors connected to each other. Um, but here you can see me connecting the screws again after I removed the diode because the voltage on the 12 volt lines um, was dropped down to 5. And when testing the input with my model meter, it shows 12.07. I connected the input and my multimeter also showed 12.07 at the output. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.